MedCram.com. Welcome to another MedCram COVID-19 update. Yes, yet another update. And why are we having this update? Well, I hate to say this, but hospitalizations for COVID-19 are increasing. And this is not just data that I'm seeing on the websites. I am actually seeing this personally in the hospitals that I'm working at. We're starting to see more and more COVID-19 patients coming in. It's not nearly the way it was two years ago, but it's definitely increasing and it's been a steady increase. So today we're going to talk about what this means and why maybe this is happening. And I want to be clear up front, I am an ICU doctor, and so far none of these patients have reached the intensive care unit. They're on the regular floor. Therefore, I don't know what their vaccination status is individually, so I can't tell you that. The other thing I can tell you is, again, they haven't reached the intensive care unit, so this may be as far as they get. And if that's the case, then this would be a very good thing. The other thing I want to make sure that you're aware of as well is that we've seen surges like this in previous summers, and so far, this is the smallest surge that we've seen. So it may be that a surge is inevitable in the summertime because people are going inside, they're out of the sun, and they are in air-conditioned units where the virus can circulate. It is going up, but it's not as bad as the surge was last year, at least at this point. But first, for those of you who may not know us, we are MedCram.com. We are a medical education company that provides continuing medical education videos to healthcare professionals, publishers, and medical schools. We get no financial compensation from pharma, either personally or corporately, and we have no financial ties to any of those organizations. Our job is to explain medicine clearly. If you look at our world in data, you will see here that this is primarily what's going on right now, a phenomenon in the United States. You'll see that there is a slow but certain uptick in the number of COVID-19 patients hospitalized in the United States, whereas we're not seeing that as much with other countries at this time. Here is a zoom in of that particular graph, and you can see here that there's a steady and sure uptick here in the United States. And that might be because we've got a new variant that is emerging called EG.5, unofficially termed ERIS, E-R-I-S. It is a variant of interest at this time. It's a descendant of the XBB.1.9.2, but it actually has an additional mutation in the spike protein, and it definitely is in the sub-variant of Omicron. This year, from spring to summer, this is how things have evolved. You can see here that XBB1.5 was the predominant subvariant that's been getting less and less. And what's been getting more and more here in recent weeks is this EG.5 which was apparent even back in February, but has now started to grow steadily. So far, the information is it's no more virulent, which means it doesn't have the ability to cause more disease than previous subvariants of the virus, and that it's not exactly any more transmissible, but it is seemingly to be more dominant. Now, that is not shared by everybody. There are some experts in the world who are looking at this and are theorizing that perhaps this variant is able to escape immunity from both the vaccine and natural immunity even more than previous subvariants. So it's become a little bit more difficult to follow this because typically I would rely on my county dashboard, but they have stopped updating, unfortunately. And so what I am doing is going to the CDC website, which actually collates all of the county data and makes it available. So this website here on the CDC, which I will give a link to in the description below, shows you at a glance what's happening to hospitalizations in the most recent week. And as you can see here, it's gone up 14.3% nationwide. Total deaths have gone up about 10% nationwide. And you can see the past week's hospitalization records with COVID-19. And you can actually dig down and deep dive into this. Currently, the way that they have this listed is they have COVID-19 hospital admission levels in the U.S. by county. And if there are more than 20 per 100,000, that's in orange. If it's 10 to 19.9, that's yellow. If it's less than 10, that's green. As you can see here, the good news is that most of the country is in green. 
there are a couple of areas here in eastern Oregon that are above. And if you actually just hover over, you can see here that there has been in this particular county, which is Grant County, which seems to be a hot spot here. There are new hospital admissions of confirmed COVID-19 in the past week, total of two which because it's a rural county is going to actually put it over the threshold and put it into the red. However, if you go to more populous counties, like the one, for instance, that I work in, which is in San Bernardino County, we have 109 new hospital admissions of confirmed COVID-19 in the past week. But based on that data, that puts it at only 2.3 hospital admissions per 100,000 population. However, what's interesting to me is that that's a increase of 47.3 percent in the last week. So obviously, I'm watching that very carefully, and it goes along with what I'm seeing in my personal hospital. So there's some validation there. So anyway, this is a pretty good resource to check out where you are, where you live, and what's going on specifically. And you can see at a glance where the hotspots are right now. One state of the union that I think has done a great job of being pretty transparent with the data is the state of Utah. And you can see here that they are all in green, but there are some increases and decreases depending on which county you look at. This is their dashboard, and I find it interesting because not only do they have a lot of data that you can go through, but they have it in different time periods. So what they have here is since September 15th of 2022, which is about a year. So about a year of data, what they've shown here in terms of hospitalization cases and deaths is the following. The chances of becoming infected, hospitalized, or dying from COVID-19 in unvaccinated versus in blue, those that are vaccinated, that means two doses of the vaccine for the Moderna and the Pfizer, or one dose of the vaccine for the Johnson & Johnson, or in green, the bivalent boosted. This is since September 15th, so it doesn't tell us much about what this recent surge is doing. Down here, we have this graphically. Again, though, it's since September 15th, 2022. So again, it doesn't tell us much about what's happened in the last month. If you would like to have it broken down by age, we have that here going from 12 all the way up to 80 plus in terms of cases, hospitalizations, and deaths. Interestingly, they also graph it here in terms of weekly age-adjusted case hospitalization and mortality rates, and they show you how they do that in the description on the website. Green is bivalent boosted and when that actually happened and what the rates are in that sense as well. And one of the things I just wanted to mention to you is the definition of a unvaccinated case. Here they state on the website, a person who tests positive for COVID-19 and who is not fully vaccinated or boosted yet. This includes people who have not had any doses of a COVID-19 vaccine, those who have only had one dose of the Moderna or Pfizer vaccine, or those whom 14 days have not passed between their positive COVID-19 test and their last dose in a primary vaccine series. So it's possible that someone could have gotten one dose of the vaccine and not have gotten the second dose and have died in between those two periods of time and be counted as a unvaccinated death. However, the chances of that happening in the last 28 days are almost zero because so few people have actually become vaccinated in the last 28 days. Let me show you the data on that. So this is a graph, again, from Our World in Data that shows the number of people who have gotten at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine. As you can see in the beginning, it was closer to vertical than it was to horizontal. But now we've reached a period of time where it's essentially horizontal and there are hardly anybody getting vaccinations. Let's take a look in the last 28 days. And if we zoom into that here with May 10th, 2023 versus April 12th of 2023. So in those 28 days, there has literally been no movement on that line. So if we're just looking at the last 28 days, the exceeding vast majority of unvaccinated cases are people who have not even gotten one dose of the vaccine. And that's important because this Corona Dashboard Utah.gov website actually has data not just from post bivalent booster or even prior to bivalent booster, but it also has a tab here that looks at tabular data in the last 28 days. Let's click on post bivalent booster. That's since September 15, 2022. So obviously there's a lot of data here. We have it by group of age in cases, hospitalizations, 
and deaths. So let's first of all look at cases. And here we have the count and the rate based on how many people were vaccinated and not vaccinated in these groups of people. They then divide it into fully vaccinated and bivalent boosted, as they've done before. And what they have here is something called a rate ratio. So the rate ratio is simply the rate of the unvaccinated in this age group divided by the rate of the vaccinated in this age group. And so if this number is greater than one, it implies that it is riskier to be unvaccinated in this age group. And if this number is less than one, it implies that it is riskier to be vaccinated or in this case, bivalent boosted if it's over in this column. Important note here is that sometimes when you don't have enough numbers of people in a category, the confidence interval will be very, very wide. And a point of statistics here is simply that if the confidence interval includes the number one, it means that you really can't make any conclusion in terms of statistical significance with that category. So in this case, because it does not include the number one, we can look at this number and say there is a 1.44 or a 44% increased risk of an unvaccinated person in the age of 12 to 18 to come down with a case of SARS-CoV-2 versus those who are fully vaccinated. And the same thing here with the bivalent boosted. So you can see here what the rest of the numbers show, not only for cases, but for hospitalizations. All of these are 95% confidence intervals, which are greater than one. All of these are greater than one. What does that mean? That we can look at this and say that this is a statistically significant number. And then we can look at deaths. Now notice here that these are suppressed. And the reason is, is because there's so few in these age groups that they are suppressing it for privacy reasons. And you can see here, deaths are gonna be coming from hospitalizations and the numbers are pretty low relative to those in the higher age group, which is something that we already knew. So this is since September 15th. So that doesn't tell us much about what's happening in the last 28 days. Let's click on the last 28 days. And if this is the last 28 days, it's gonna be much smaller numbers than what we would normally get in looking at a year. So because of that, we're gonna run into situations where potentially we're not gonna have statistical significance. So just be aware of that. So these are cases which you can look at, but what I'm interested in is hospitalizations. Specifically, whether or not this resurgence of COVID-19 hospitalizations is related to vaccine, environment, the virus, and I want to see whether or not vaccination is still protecting people against hospitalizations even in the last 28 days. So again, let's take a look here at hospitalizations. So the first thing that I notice here is that we have a confidence interval that includes the number one. So I really can't make any sense of this line from 12 to 18 years of age. And notice here that the count is less than five. Actually, most of these are less than five because so few people are being hospitalized in this age group. It's likely because there's a number of people that have had the infection and have natural immunity or they've been vaccinated. So let's go on further down. The first one that we come to that actually does not include the number one is here in the 60 to 69 age group. And you can see here that there is a 95% confidence interval of 3.6 to 27.6. And what this is telling us is that somebody who is aged 60 to 69 years of age in Utah, who is unvaccinated, has a 9.93 chance times risk of becoming hospitalized than somebody who is fully vaccinated. Over here on the bivalent boosted, again, we see here 2.21, and this is 5.74. So the number actually lies somewhere in between here. I don't think you can really compare this number, 9.93, with the 5.74, because, again, the number is somewhere between these two, 95%, and it actually could be slightly different. As we go up, 1.4 to 6.3, 3.1 to 20.4, 1.3 to 5.2, 2.3 to 11.4, and the same sort of situation applies. So what we can see based on this number is that at least in the state of Utah, in the last 28 days that we have data for, particularly in these age groups, not because there's anything specific about this age, but because we have more data in this age group, we can say that the cause of this surge is unlikely to be related in one way or the other to vaccination status in the positive. In other words, it's still beneficial to have a vaccination status that is positive for protection against hospitalization for COVID-19. If there are other states that you guys are aware of and their websites, I'd be happy to look at those as well. And please give us comments with those states and perhaps the links as well so we can take a look at those. Utah is just one state, but I think they've done a good job of making that data pretty transparent.
The question is, is what do you do if you think you've come down with COVID-19? Well, we've covered this here before, but we have a video out that is millions of views called 10 Tips If You Get COVID-19, the Immune Response and Monitoring, where we cover a lot of the tips that we've given, the things that I still do myself when I think I've been exposed or family members have come to me asking, what should we do? And I think that's a great video to get an overview, and we will put a link in the description below. Another number of videos that we've also done on this looks at Paxlovid, which is the medication that can reduce the chances of you becoming hospitalized. And that's a video titled New COVID Pill That's Effective. We've also discussed the case for sunlight in COVID and why that is important. We go through the science of oxidative stress and why the spike protein may be affecting oxidative stress in the mitochondria. We also have a video that goes over whether or not Omicron boosting or bivalent boosting would be beneficial for some people in the population. And we have a video that goes over the risks and benefits of that. So if you're interested in that, I highly encourage you to watch that video as well. That also we have a link to in the description below. In addition to that, we also talked about very early on in the pandemic, people have asked about hot and cold therapy. And it is true, the SARS-CoV-2 virus suppresses interferon response. It's one of the reasons why it can evade the immune system so well. And one of the things that can increase interferon response from your own immune system is a hot, cold therapy response that we talk about and show the science of in update 46 and 47, which has been published over three years ago. We also talk about, for those of you who have had repeated infections, long COVID and its effect on fat metabolism and the diagnosis and treatment of long COVID and what the science is saying regarding that. And for those of you who've gotten COVID-19 repeatedly, we also talk about why some get COVID-19 repeatedly in our video. So please look at the description below for links to all of these videos. So I hope this has been helpful. If you want to support us, please subscribe, give us a great comment, and importantly, join us at medcram.com where we explain medicine clearly. Thanks for joining us.